Well, welcome to part two of our Bahamas trip update. Last time we talked to you through going over to Bimini, to the Berry Islands, and then left you off in Nassau, where we spent some time at Atlantis. This week we'll share what happened next. Cheers. Cheers. Go ho ho in a bottle of rum. Hoist the mainsail here I come. Ain't no room on board for the incense. So our plan had been to go to the Abacos after our time at Atlantis. And what happened was winds started to pick up out of the northeast. And in the Bahamas, uh, it really depends on wind direction, mm -hmm. what kind of sea state you're going to experience. And so what we were seeing was it was not looking good to get up there. And we were we had to move from Atlantis because it's an expensive uh, kind of resort experience. That uh, So we moved to kind of the lower budget uh, choice Nassau Harbor Club mm -hmm. in uh, Nassau. And there were a bunch of loopers we there to, that there came a, and went. Yeah, um, there was a pool and a really nice restaurant. And it was across from, it, it looked like a rundown uh, strip mall but it had the Bahama print company with, with just gorgeous prints and um, of course we had to buy stuff there and then a shishi grocery store and so I was pleasantly surprised and then we spent a day uh, touring Nassau yeah. we went to the the Queen Steps yep. and the fort, the, at, the top of the the fort hill. at the top and we met a great historian uh, that told us all about the Queen Steps and we did the market that's near the um, the cruise, cruise terminal. terminals and so hit a couple uh, of breweries yeah we called the uh, told the kids that that area of nassau is the no thank you area because you're just like no thank you no thank you no thank you but uh we did hit um the brewery <laughs> and we hit um the fish fry area where there's like a yeah. dozen fish fry restaurants where we did have conch salad Crack Conk, Conk and Conk Fritters, fritters. We had and some three. fresh local fish and stuff too. Yeah, that was good. Uh, cool. And then we got to talking at Docktails with other loopers mm -hmm. and commiserating that hey, we're kind of pinned down by this weather. For a week, it uh, looked like it was looking like yeah, a week to ten days, and we had already kind of done all the yeah. Nassau we <laughs> had needed to do. And so they said, hey, we're heading to the Exumas tomorrow. Uh, it looks like a good crossing window. It's about a six or eight hour day, yeah, whatever. Not very long. Uh, if you're interested in that, we're heading that direction. And Tomorrow. so <laughs> we did. We packed it in we and we tossed out our plan, abandoned our map for the Abacos, and we headed to the Exumas and landed at Highborn Key. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's kind of this sheltered, protected region to get from Nassau over here to. Uh, yeah. Exumas. The Exumas. And so we find ourselves tonight in the Exumas, which was not on our plan. No. Uh, we were heading northeast and instead we headed uh, southeast. southeast. <laughs> so here we are and uh, it looks like we're going to get the weather, but we are going to hop our way. I think we'll spend two nights here is what it looks mm -hmm. like uh, at Highborn Key. Uh, and we'll go over here to Allen Key where the iguanas are. It's mm -hmm. just right behind us here. And then we'll head south and just island hop until weather looks good to head north either to the Abacos or back to maybe Nassau or the Berries and back to mainland Florida. Um, we just don't know. And that's one of the things that we've learned on our loop is that sometimes uh, weather causes you to make different plans. So regardless of what you had planned, sometimes you just have to adjust. But so. particularly in the Bahamas because you need a place to hide. And the direction of the wind makes a huge difference. Yeah. So these northeast winds that we had been having are terrible for the Abacos, not as bad for the Exumas. Mm -hmm. And we had a great time in Nassau, very protected harbor, yeah. uh, through some pretty severe but winds. We don't want to be there for the next week and a half waiting for good wind in the Abacos. We can't even see when there would be good weather and waves in the Abacos. So. So we'd much rather have this because yes. look at this water out here. I mean, we absolutely amazing. We snorkeled today, like right as soon as we got in, yeah. we just hop in the Anchoring water. Anchoring was no problem. The kids were like Psh! out in the water yeah. before we saw the nurse shark, but yeah. that's fine. He's around somewhere. <laughs> 
uh, and then we use that to kind of start our time um, marching down the Exumas yeah. to the southeast with the goal that we would um, make it as far as Staniel Key and then maybe slowly work our way back up. And maybe at that point we were still thinking we would hit some Abacos and, and back. Yeah, we'd but, throw in Abacos. Um, don't, don't know. So, uh, so but the great part about the Exumas is once you have all those long days past Nassau, then it's just short hop to another amazing place after an amazing place. Yeah. And so uh, the first amazing place was Fowl Key. Uh, we, had, we had wanted to go to the Land and Sea Park at Wardwick Wells and grab a <laughs> mooring ball, but though- We did go there, but-, but We just could, it was way- three, At least three and four foot. Three foot uh, waves inside the uh, yeah. mooring field. And the and kids and I attempted five tries to catch the mooring ball, and it still would have been like this all night. Yeah. So we added two hours to our already long day and uh, went to Falky. Yeah, and Falky was awesome. We found a great little anchorage. got up the next morning at low tide to go do some amazing things. So we snorkeled this uh, cave so you can get in at low tide. You don't have to dive down underneath to get in. You, yeah. Your head can be above water the whole time. They even have mooring balls for Denise because it's, it's such a glorious place that they know people are going to dig in there. Yeah. Uh, Dundas. Dundas, was, uh, the name yeah. Of it. Rocky Dundas. Here we are, inside the grotto. And that is the cave we swam through to get in here. Rachel's bubble bath, which is right there next to Compass Key, uh, which was a, amazing. Again, we were the only ones there. We timed it. Uh, it was great. And then tour boats started showing up just kind of after we were there. So we really enjoyed the water crashing up and over and uh, the natural beauty of the Exuma. So it was really true. The kids just had a blast. Yeah. So mommy, you spent 16 years keeping your children alive. And then you bring them out here to Rachel's bubble bath with the sheer violence of the Atlantic Ocean pushing and crashing over them. It's, it's terrifying to watch them adventure. Especially since we just took them snorkeling through a cave as the tide was coming up. Also terrifying. Trying to have fun and excitement at the same time. All right, <laughs> we're gonna stop filming and enjoy Rachel's bubble bath. <laughs> And then we went back and started moving again and, and headed further down uh, the Exumas and made it as far as Staniel Key. And 
that was really a gem. Uh, again, we got pinned down by some weather. Uh, it really totally depended fine. depended mm. which side of um, Big Major yeah. uh, Island you were on. So we were on the east side that was, uh, it's called Between the Majors, uh, mm -hmm. Big Major and whatever, Little Major or something like I that, see. I don't know. <laughs> but it seems like it, it would be protected from both sides and it was not. So uh, Big Major on the west side was the preferred anchorage. And so once we had moved there, mm -hmm. uh, we had a much smoother time. And, and we thought that Between the Majors would be great because on the uh, west side of Big Major, it's totally open and there are 50 boats there. And it's actually, um, near the pig beach yep. and so we thought there's too many people here this is going to be bad it's, but after a rolling night and two rolling nights um between the majors we're like oh maybe there's a reason there's 50 boats here they we were too smart by half so um yeah that was and we had friends over there already and we went through a treacherous narrow skinny uh cut to cut get in there to get in yep. there um because we like to do things the hard way and it was just, we had a blast. More swimming off the, the Swim platform, the swim friends, uh, dock tails, just. Mm -hmm. um, Beach it, tails. Yeah, with, with, yeah, looper friends. So mm -hmm. it was really a lot of fun. Uh, in fact, we'll do an entire video on our best day on the Great Loop so far. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those days in Staniel Key. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for joining us for our second uh, of three Bahamas updates. Uh, we'll see you next week with uh, third and maybe final. Or maybe uh, Stanion. Or, or um, in addition to the Stanion. So, <laughs> anyway, cheers. Cheers.